Whether you're opening the complete six unit curriculum binder or an individual unit download, the first thing you will see is the introduction to reading workshop for the secondary classroom. This section provides you with information on the reading workshop method and how to establish it in your classroom. From parent letters to how to hold individual student reading conferences. This section provides you with everything you need to launch reading workshop in your classroom. In addition to this introduction to the method, there is also a written guide to understanding the components of this curriculum. While the components will be identified and explained in the video, this guide will come in handy as you move through the lessons on your own in your classroom. The first few pages of each unit are the unit overview, which includes a synopsis, the lesson sequence, pre-unit preparation, and a chart with the Common Core Standards alignment for the entire unit. The synopsis is a good snapshot for the unit's purpose, objectives, and learning goals, all of which will be reiterated and expanded upon in the connection sections of the lesson. The lesson sequence serves as your table of contents for the unit. These lessons were written to be taught specifically in the order listed. If you choose not to use a lesson or change the order, you will likely have to adjust future lessons to reflect those changes. The pre-unit preparation will likely be most helpful to you as you prepare to teach the unit. This section is a detailed list of the lessons that will require more prep than just making copies. This information is repeated on the individual lessons as well for your convenience. The last page of the unit overview is the Common Core's Standard Alignment Chart. These standards are also included on the individual lessons, but more on that later. After the lesson overview, you will find the lessons and activities in the order indicated in the lesson sequence. Each lesson is set up the same way. Under the name of the lesson is a list of materials. Listed first are any required materials not provided in the resource, such as butcher paper or markers. Next, you'll see a list of materials that are included. Their names are in bold here in the list and when they are referred to in the lesson. While there is a page number provided, all handouts for the lesson appear immediately after the lesson. Lastly, if any note, sheet, or handout from a previous lesson are needed, they will appear at the very end of the materials section under the subheading from previous lessons. Below the list of materials is the preparation section. This section only appears on lessons where you need to do more than just make copies of the handouts to prepare for the lesson. This information is the same as what is listed in the pre-unit preparation in the unit overview. Next is a list of Common Core Anchor Standards covered in the lesson. Just the codes are provided here. But if you want to read the language of the standard, just refer back to your standard alignment chart provided in the unit overview. Now for the good stuff, the lessons. Each lesson follows the same structure. First, the connection section explains why you are teaching this lesson. It contextualizes the lesson in the unit and in the broader scope of your student's education. While this section is written specifically for you, the teacher, it can easily be paraphrased for your more reluctant and resistant students. The instruction modeling section is where the teaching happens. This section defines terms, explains ideas, and often requires students to complete an included note sheet. In the practice section, students are usually working through an activity or handout to help them further understand the skill you just taught them. The reading task describes what students should be doing while they read their choice books. This is usually a task related to what the students just learned or practiced, but sometimes the task is just to enjoy the act of reading. Finally, the share section is the closing of the lesson. Sometimes it is just a quick and independent exit slip, but other times students will be asked to share with the whole class or a partner what they discovered during their reading. 
Last but not least, there is some specific text formatting in the lessons that takes just a second to get used to, but it will help you deliver each lesson. Plain text is used for all directions to the teacher. These are not intended for you to read aloud to your students. They are just for you. Bold text is used for names of an included handout or note sheet. Italic text is teacher speak, or language intended to be spoken aloud to students. While you could read this scripted language verbatim to your class, it was written to serve as a model of how to deliver the content to your students. If you see the word NOTE in all caps, it indicates a special note to you about the lesson. These are reminders, implementation tips, or just suggestions. Finally, when you see the words TEACHER COPY in all caps, it is referring to the completed version of the note sheet for you to use during instruction. This completed note sheet can be found in the lesson materials immediately following the lesson. Now you are ready to use Reading Workshop for the Secondary Classroom. Additional information about the specific units can be found in the unit-specific training videos. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.